ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Soft Show. Uh, my interview series, Chat with the Stars, and whatnot, uh, has continued. And, and finally, I finally had the opportunity to talk to the guy that I've been waiting to talk to since, well, let's just say since June 22nd, we'll say, since uh, his back of his uh, release CD release party. The, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, Ned Beatty. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, and I'm glad I was able to finally uh, get in contact with you. I know you've been kind of busy uh, doing, working on, on another film. Yes. Yes, uh, things kind of picked up. I, I hadn't done a whole lot uh, last year. Uh, that's why I got a chance to work on the album that I worked on. And, but uh, this year is a different story. It's a change that things seem to be coming along sort of one after another. Okay. And uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to explain to you and explain to the people listening why I wanted to interview you in the first place. And it all has to go with, you know, you know when I got a chance to finally meet you back on uh, June 22nd when you had your CD release party, uh, you know, just to realize that, you know, you, you are a Hollywood actor, and you, uh, I guess we can say you're a legend of the business, and uh, and uh, having the opportunity to finally get a chance to interview you after waiting for quite a while uh, gives me the, the great experience, and I'm thrilled to finally get to meet uh, one of the idols, one of my idols growing up, you know. Oh, thank you. And, and it's kind of cool because since you're, you know, around the area, since you're not, like, you know, far, farther away than you are right now, you know, it's kind of cool that you're, you, I guess you can continue, continue yourself a, a local as well, kind of. Oh, sure. I mean, this is getting to be, uh, I keep threatening to stay here until it gets so cold that they have to uh, take us out with an ice pick. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, no, I, uh, I, I like it up here a lot, and it, it, it's a it's great for us because my wife's family is here. Yeah. And a good deal of my family has uh, gone on to their just reward, so I don't have a whole lot of family to visit sometimes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, especially the older parts of my family, my own sister and my mom and my dad and all those. And yeah. So it's kind of a, it's a special place for me. And we spend, like, this year we got here in... Uh, we got here in the early part of May, and we'll stay through October, I suspect. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, what about Carlson besides, because uh, I was going to ask about Carlson uh, anyway. Yeah. Uh, what about Carlson besides uh, the fact that you, your wife's from here and whatnot? Uh, is there anything else about Carlson that you enjoy? Well, uh, the number one thing that comes to my mind is the fact that they're a very nice golf course here. Oh, yeah. Very nice nine hole golf course. I play with nine holes at least once a day. Okay. And uh, sometimes it's pretty early in the morning. A lot of people think we're nuts to go out there when we do. <laughs> Vern, Vern Porter and I play together every morning. Okay, well that's cool. That's, uh, and uh, I guess the other thing is it's, it's a small town. The small towns appeal to me. Uh, yeah. Kind of get to know everybody and yeah, it's kind of like that. Kind of different from we live in a bigger city, I suppose. And oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to get to the interview because, uh, you know, I hope I, I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but we'll try to keep it, you know, hopefully half an hour or whatever, whatever we can go. And uh, basically, you know, you, you, you're talking about your CD, and we're, we're going to talk about that. That's kind of going to be kind of the subject of, of this interview. But first of all, I want you to, you know, help me or whatever, explain yourself uh, about growing up. I like growing up. Yeah. Well, I grew up in a small town uh, that became a big suburb. Uh, actually, it was I was born uh, in 1937. Okay. And, uh, you know, I can remember the Second World War, and I can remember the, the end of it, and I can remember the soldiers coming home, and I was remembering how always I couldn't wait to be a soldier when I grew up. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to do every, anything that had to do with soldiering. And uh, so th I grew up that way, and, and uh, like I say, a small town, a lot of church, uh, church is a special place. It was about two blocks away. Uh, the, the schoolhouse I went to, grade school, was right across the street. So I was pretty much on foot, and uh, a little bit later on, I got a bicycle. <laughs> that was a form of transportation. Oh, cool. And, and like I was saying, the, my town became a rather big suburb outside Louisville, Kentucky, over the years uh, between the 40s and the 50s, especially into the 60s. And uh, that was interesting. I got the see both sides of that coin you know? okay and uh and i was always very much drawn to the countryside i used to uh, go on my way to try to get jobs on farms okay uh, when i was young so i always liked the i liked the, that that kind of was that was my favorite kind of work okay cool. farm work and uh 
I don't know. I guess I, I grew up... A lot of people have asked me when I first started working in the theater that, that, you know, what was my theatrical experience before I started being in plays. Well, the truth of the matter was, I just kind of started being in plays uh, before I ever saw one. Okay. I was kind of shocked the first time I saw one. I thought, oh, shoot, this is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd already been in about four or five. Yeah. But... Uh, I, actually, I think it was the church and the music and, and being involved in doing a lot of singing. That's really how I got started in, in show business. Okay. And uh, sort of went from there. Okay. I, I originally worked in the theater for about 15 years where I ever got okay. involved in film. Okay. Uh, what was your uh, first exposure to music? Well, I, I, I would have to say church. Yeah. Um, you know, um, singing in church and... and and, and my my recollection is, I can remember a few places later on, but my first time I ever heard people sing together, yeah. uh, first time I ever heard people talk about certain kinds of things, value things, and uh, things that were important in their life was in church. And uh, so I, I, when I think back about it, I think that church was the first theater okay. uh, for me. And uh, I... I yeah, uh, that's just what okay. it was. And, and it was very special. I liked church a lot. Yeah. When I was a kid. And uh, did you ever sing like in the choir, church choir at all? Oh, or? sure. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of got started that way. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of the songs on the album is a song called Have Thine Own Way, Lord. And uh, I used to sing that all the time because my voice turned very deep even when yeah. I was a very young man. I, it really changed when I was about 11 years old and got very deep. Okay. And that was one of the few songs in the hymnal that I could sing in the key that it was written in, in the hymnal. Okay. So I've been singing that one for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and that happened to be the uh, first track on your CD. Yeah, you know, I didn't plan it that way, but uh, the fellow who was producing it... Uh, put it in front. I said, how come you put that one in front? He said, that's the best one you did. And I said, practice, practice, practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, cool. And uh, on your CD, you got great 12 tracks and uh, of uh, stuff that has been redone by many other uh, artists as well. But, uh, oh, sure. But uh, you, you just got a niche for uh, making your own brand of, uh, of uh, gospel music. Uh, did you, uh, in, in your collection here, uh, I'm looking at it right now, uh, yeah. did you... Uh, I write any tunes at all? Like add any of your own? No, there was one new tune on it, and it was the bass player uh, in the band. Uh, it was basically a uh, bluegrass band okay. that we used, and uh, which kind of fit in with music I liked a lot when I was yeah. growing up. And uh, we never had many instruments in church besides the piano and organ, but. Uh, I always like the sound of bluegrass with okay. uh, gospel music. But the bass player wrote the one tune we have, uh, Jesus Built a Bridge to Heaven. One okay. of my favorites on there. Act number five, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, and uh, I guess you can say all in all, as many uh, music uh, genres as there are, uh, that bluegrass, gospel, or anything that has to do with bluegrass or gospel would probably be a, a big favorite of yours. Yes, yes. I, I got to work. The first time I had a, a paying job as a singer yeah. uh, was in Berea, Kentucky. Now, Berea, Kentucky is on in the foothills to the Appalachian Mountains. It's on the western side of the, the mountains. Okay. And it was quite a, uh, quite a place, especially for folk music. And uh, we literally, we did a show at night, which was about the beginnings of the Civil War, because in that particular area, there were people who were abolitionists were living in one county and the very next county over there were slave owners. Yeah. So they sort of had their own private little <laughs> civil war right there near Berea. Okay. And uh, I, that's the uh, first time I ever got to paid to be a singer and it's also the first time I ever did the uh, acting. Okay. And uh, I used to make a joke out of the fact that the reason I got to say some lines in this historical pageant <laughs> was the fact that I could talk loud because we were in an outdoor theater. Yeah. Uh, so. now, okay, now, now talk about acting now, because uh, I'm going to ask you about that, of course. Uh, yeah. How did you get into acting? Uh, did you ever consider a career of music instead? Well, I think it happened in that period. Uh, the first the first two summers after I had basically left school, uh, I, I had one year in college, and then I decided I better uh, get a job. 
<laughs> so I started working as a, in the daytime, I worked as a supermarket butcher. Okay. I was an apprentice butcher, and uh, then I would do, uh, after the first year I did that, uh, next year I sort of got interested in acting from being in this outdoor drama, and uh, I had a small part, and then I got a, got to understudy a bigger part, and the second year I went there, I ended up playing the biggest, you know, kind of character part in the whole piece. Uh-huh. Uh, so I, I was it just sort of I got just sort of moved in that direction, and uh, I really liked acting, and acting seemed to come fairly naturally okay. to me. And uh, I, after that, I just started looking into it. And uh, even though I was working, you know, as a butcher in the daytime, I was doing amateur theater at night. Okay. And then the very next year after.